Hi, everyone. This is possibly the most important Farsight project to date for everyone. If you have never watched a Farsight project, begin with this one. Farsightprime.com is where we showcase all of our projects, and this one needs to be seen by everyone, especially if you are an academic or an academic administrator of a college or university. Begin here. I want to persuade you with this one project that something is really very seriously wrong with our current world, and what is being taught at colleges and universities worldwide is seriously out of date. Just hear me out. If you want to reject what I show you after you hear me out, that is your choice. But if you don't hear what I have to say and to show you, the mistake is on your shoulders, not mine. What we have done with this project that you are watching right now is to pull everything together. We begin with video recordings that we have made with our own cameras of extraterrestrial spacecraft flying in Earth's atmosphere. And then we use remote viewing, which is a specialty of Farsight that I will explain more about in a bit, to look inside these spacecraft to show you who is flying them, what they are doing, and where they came from. Again, don't dismiss this out of hand. Just hear me out. Once you see the spacecraft and believe that they are real, everything in your worldview will change, and you will realize that everything that I present you today needs to be considered. So let's start with the video recordings of the extraterrestrial spacecraft. In this project, these recordings constitute what we at Farsight call the target for this study. Now understand that any video or photographic evidence that I show you can be dismissed by any debunker who happens to come along. They can claim anything. It's a bug, it's swamp gas, it's Photoshop, whatever. And most people, especially academics, will accept it without question. But what we are doing at Farsight is also telling you how we took these video recordings so that you and your people can do the same thing. You can always dismiss any video or picture that someone else makes, but what if you make it? Or what if your own faculty or employees that work at your university or company make it? Will you dismiss it then? Moreover, we have recently purchased a very high-end laptop that can handle the specialized video editing requirements for such recordings in a mobile manner. And we have specially modified cameras that can make the recording. So now it is possible for me to travel to your location with our own mobile equipment to make a presentation about the recording and editing process and to show you in your own auditorium how we did everything, including how you can take and edit your own recordings that will show you as clear as day the extraterrestrial spacecraft that are flying over your colleges and universities and cities all over every day. And since I am an academic myself, I would be very comfortable making such a presentation and conducting such a workshop. I would not require any compensation, and the only thing your university or college would need to supply would be normal airfare, a hotel room, and food appropriate for me to eat. The cost to your institution would be minimal. So let me explain why you should consider doing this. The video that you are watching now has three primary parts. First, the physical description of the extraterrestrial spacecraft as captured with our own cameras. Second, the remote viewing results obtained by highly trained specialists who are using methods that are derivative of those developed by the United States military and used for espionage purposes. And three, a discussion with a highly respected aviation authority in flight traffic control who describes things like the speed of the objects in the recordings and explains why the video recordings of the objects recorded with Farsight's own cameras cannot be anything simple, like a bug or normal aircraft. So, starting with the first part, we begin with the description of the videos that we took for this particular project of the extraterrestrial spacecraft flying over my own house. We have found that these spacecraft exist in enormous quantity and they are everywhere. So it does not matter where I was shooting this, although there do seem to be some high traffic areas that we can identify. We will be showing you in this video just a few examples from a large collection of such recordings that we have, and our technical expert will go over the physical characteristics of these recordings at the end of this video. 
These crafts use stealth technology to hide their presence, so you normally cannot see them with visible light. You need a camera that has been modified to see in the infrared spectrum. Also, they fly incredibly fast, even within Earth's atmosphere. We are routinely recording speeds of over 20,000 miles an hour or 32,000 kilometers per hour. So you need a camera that can shoot at 120 frames per second to follow them. And then you need to utilize editing software in a special way to enable you to find the spacecraft in the footage. Typically, a 10-minute recording taken in the middle of the day will contain numerous examples of extraterrestrial spacecraft that are clearly not bugs or anything else of a terrestrial origin. Obviously, one needs to know how to demonstrate that in this case. In this video that you are watching now, all of this will be explained to you if you hang in there to the end. The second part of this presentation that you are watching now contains the remote viewing results that we have obtained using our own specialist remote viewers, working totally blind under very defendable conditions. You will see them all describe the same thing, which by itself is remarkable. They did all their work by themselves and none of them communicated with one another about the project during the data collection phase. These are some of the most highly trained specialists in this process that exist anywhere. And just looking at how they all describe the same thing, given that they were told nothing about this project when they began their work, is exceptionally interesting. Now, the third part of this video that you're watching now, a part that is at the end, was originally a standalone presentation of an ongoing Farsight show called Identified Flying Objects hosted by one of our remote viewers, Intisam, as she interviews a tactical authority in flight traffic control, Lincoln Lounsbury. Now, we include this at the end of this video so you can see it conveniently and immediately after watching the remote viewing parts of this presentation. Now, if you are an academic or a college or university administrator, why should you even bother with this? Well, it is common for institutions of higher learning to spend time and money only on topics that have already been endorsed by the mainstream, or government, or at least the media. But here we have a special case of being able to show you something that you can now demonstrate for yourself as being absolutely true. And then you have to reflect on exactly what it is that you are teaching at your colleges and universities. In the United States, students pay an awful lot for a college degree. And what are they getting for their money in the 21st century if the colleges and universities are teaching them obsolete 20th century information? It is only a matter of time before some colleges and universities will have faculty who are more up to date with the new information and students will start favoring those colleges over the ones who are still teaching the obsolete stuff. Students will begin to vote with their tuition dollars. Look at it this way. Once you learn how to take the video recordings of the extraterrestrial spacecraft with your own cameras and to edit the footage with your own computers, everything will change in your minds. Let's go over some of the obvious changes within the field of physics. Once you see the spacecraft with your own eyes on your own video footage, physicists will have to admit that the extraterrestrials obviously have technology that enables them to travel interstellar distances quickly. Once the physicists accept this as a real fact, they will have to accept that they need to rethink how to expand their theories of physics to enable this to happen. This is probably going to require a new conceptualization of the currently accepted theories of relativistic physics to incorporate a generalization of quantum mechanics. And then think about the social sciences. Once you accept that the extraterrestrial spacecraft are real and that they are flying over your own heads nonstop in the middle of the day, you then have to ask about the populations who are flying those spacecraft. What are their politics? Are they all at peace with one another? Or are they like nations on Earth, armed to the teeth and ready to fight? What will the fields of sociology and political science look like once you accept that the spacecraft are real and that they are here now? Moreover, what will the social sciences have to say about governmental politics that have been followed for decades to keep the information about the extraterrestrial secret, to keep all this from the eyes of the public for so long? 
What does that say about the contemporary use of propaganda and the manipulation of the media and public opinion, even in democratic societies? Right now, political scientists and sociologists are not even thinking about these topics, let alone talking about them. The second part of this presentation involves the remote viewing results. Now watch those closely. All of this has been forbidden knowledge in academia and with respect to the general public and the media. But if you can accept the reality of the extraterrestrial spacecraft flying right over your own head after denying that possibility for decades, are you going to draw a line in the sand regarding everything else? Once you know anything about the extraterrestrials, you will learn that they communicate telepathically routinely, as routinely as Earth humans use physical language. Moreover, you will find out that they use perceptual abilities that we call remote viewing routinely as well. Indeed, you will find out that they attempt to use technology to block such things as a means of trying to keep their own secrets. If you accept that the extraterrestrial spacecraft are real, then everything else has to be considered possible. You don't want to be up to date with one part, but remain obsolete with the other parts. Remember, remote viewing may be a natural ability, but it is not easy to do reliably. These people who you are now going to see spent years working full-time learning how to do this well. It is comparable to obtaining a black belt in a martial art. It takes a lot of time and effort to achieve this, but those who have done it clearly demonstrate to others that it can be done. Now let's talk about some other fields that will be affected by this. Once one accepts that remote viewing is possible, then what does that say about the field of psychology? Basically, remote viewing demonstrates that the physical brain is not the only mediator of human consciousness. People are capable of perceiving across time and space, which means that some aspect of a person exists across time and space. And if you extend that thought, this means that a person cannot really die once the physical body perishes. Something must remain because a person properly trained can perceive into the past, present, and future. So the person must already exist in the future in some shape or form, even if not with that particular body. Otherwise, they could not perceive the future. Currently, there are no mainstream schools of psychology that incorporate non-physical perception or thought into their theories. There are no significant discussions taking place. No one is talking about it. More time is spent defending what must not be taught or even thought about than exploring these real possibilities that unambiguously exist. Psychologists need to sort this out. And what about psychiatry? It is true that some authentically crazy people think about all sorts of things, including space aliens. But are psychiatrists supposed to include that anyone who thinks that extraterrestrials exist is crazy? Psychiatrists need to be able to differentiate between authentically crazy people and people who simply are exploring new ideas. Once the psychiatrists see the extraterrestrial spacecraft with their own eyes, captured with their own cameras, then they are in a better position to identify those people who are truly crazy from those people who are simply more open-minded. Believing in extraterrestrials is not a test for mental stability, especially if one is grounded in appropriate procedures for obtaining good video recordings of extraterrestrial spacecraft. One is not deluded if one is looking at good, solid evidence. But truly crazy people do exist, and psychiatrists need to be able to identify them when those mentally unwell individuals talk about extraterrestrials and anything else. You need to be able to tell the difference between a deluded person and a smart person, and it is sometimes not so obvious at first glance. Psychiatrists need to sort this out. And what about some other sciences, such as optometry? Now, schools of optometry have professors who do research into seeing. But here we are not talking about refracting visible light. Rather, there are things that we humans simply cannot see with our unaided eyes, but which are real. Professors of optometry need to start thinking about how to construct devices that will allow people, including scientists, to see things that are currently invisible to them. 
This will undoubtedly involve devices that will have sensors that can register frequencies that go far into and possibly above the ultraviolet realm of the electromagnetic spectrum. I am talking about sensors that are more capable with respect to higher frequencies than even those available to modern full-spectrum cameras. Then, computer circuitry will be needed to translate those readings into things that can be shown on an LCD screen and seen by a normal person's eyes. Such devices might look like bulky binoculars, like the things over the eyes used for advanced computer gaming. But they would have lots of tech inside, not just lenses. Optometrists need to sort out how to do this. Now, let's address the remote viewing for this project. I am Courtney Brown, director of Farsight, and we at Farsight study the perceptual process known as remote viewing. Remote viewing is a mental process that is done using highly structured methodologies that are derived from those developed by the United States military and used for espionage purposes. But Farsight is civilian, and we use remote viewing for scientific experiments and for exploration. Now, this new project conducted at Farsight employs four remote viewers who are among the most experienced and highly trained viewers existing today. Intisam, Aziz Brown, Yeme Genet, and Shante. The remote viewers all describe much the same thing, all corroborating reports. Moreover, all of the remote viewing was done totally blind, and none of the remote viewers communicated with one another about the project during the data collection phase. This is not science fiction, told through riveting remote viewing conducted under clean scientific conditions. This is as real as it gets. Now, as with all of our projects at Farsight, there is a target. And the target for this project is the cigar-shaped UAP UFO that was video recorded by Farsight on the 14th of February, 2023. In addition to this, the viewers were instructed to hone in on a variety of focuses. They were only told to perceive focus one, focus two, focus three, and so on. They were not told what these focuses represented, but you can now know that. Focus one is the exterior of the UAP UFO in the target, or what we call structure A. Focus two is the subjects inside the UAP UFO. Focus three is the location where the UAP UFO resides or stays normally on or near Earth, what we call location G. Focus four are the other crafts that are associated with the UAP UFO. And focus five is the place that the pilot of the UAP UFO would consider home base. In addition, we focus on the subject inside structure A and in charge of structure A, a subject we call subject M. And we also focus on the subject in charge of location G, someone who we identify as subject P. So let me show you what we got. Starting with the results for Intisam and then Aziz Brown, Yame Genet, and finally Shante, these are our perceptions of the cigar-shaped UAP UFO that was recorded on video by Farsight on the 14th of February, 2023. But in particular, I want to make special note of two things that happened that are somewhat extraordinary, although in actuality, everything in this project is extraordinary. During Aziz's session, his iPad seems to have been strategically attacked while he was recording his data by someone who was hostile to him getting information during an interrogation. Let Aziz explain it to you. And with Yeme Genet's session, well, she is an extraordinary telepath, probably due to the fact that she was legally blind for most of her life, and she had to rely on her intuitive senses to survive, given that she could not see expressions on people's faces. Well, her eyesight has been surgically corrected now, but her telepathic capabilities are still there. One thing about her is that she is absolutely fearless when communicating with someone telepathically, and usually the hostiles know it. So in addition to describing the physical aspects of the target, she has what one might call a feisty conversation with someone whom she was determined to get information from. Trust me, this is going to be interesting. After you watch all the sessions, I will return to pull everything together.